Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be continuing our series looking at the Gigan Press system. Uh, this is the fourth episode. The first three looked at uh, you know the various formations we can utilise best with the Gigan Press system, and how we can apply those within a match situation in the uh, last episode. From here on, we're going to be taking more of a, a deep dive into each individual position and looking at examples of the sort of players uh, that work well within the system. Uh, so first of all, we're going to take a quick look at what the advanced forward role actually uh, involves, as we're going to look at uh, forwards in this uh, first e positional uh, player episode. So, an advanced forward's main role is to lead the line and look to spearhead attacking moves. His primary duty is to be the focal point of attacking moves and is required to both score and create goals. So the reason I've gone with this, uh, you might think that uh, like for something, the way that Klopp plays uh, using Roberto Firmino, a pressing forward, might be a more natural way to, to go to do this, or maybe even a deep lying forward. But if you're like me and you prefer your striker to be the main source of goals within your team, then I, within FM22 I've discovered that um, for me uh, the advanced forward role is, is the main way of uh, ensuring that your striker is regularly scoring a good number of goals. And so that's why I've gone with that. Um, so we're going to take a look at who is probably the most um, obvious person within the game to, to be a uh, attacker within the Gigan Pro system. And it's probably to no one's great surprise that that person is Erling Haaland. So just signed by Manchester City in real life to lead their line going into the 2022-2023 to 2023 season. Um, Really, uh, Haaland is the, the epitome of what we're looking for in a, in a striker for our Gigan Press system. Um, I mean, he is an elite level player, and if you're coming into the game starting your season, uh, you know, he, he would probably cost around about the £150 million mark, which is quite high. Unless you're a Paris Saint Germain or a Manchester City uh, at the start of the game, then, you know, you probably won't be able to sign Haaland. But we're going to look at um, the sort of attributes that, that we're looking for that he possesses in, in great abundance. Uh, to, to be a successful striker for us. So the first thing I, I mainly look for is pace and acceleration. And really, for the system we want to play, a minimum of 13 in both of those is, is sort of ideal, I would say. So we can see that Haaland's 19 for pace and 17 for acceleration. So he is very quick, very, very quick. And the second thing we're going to be looking for, obviously as a striker, at the risk of stating the obvious, is finishing, getting on the end of moves and just making sure they hit the back of the net. And again, Haaland at 18 out of 20 is, is probably one of the, the best finishers within the game. Next, uh, something else I tend to look for in, in strikers is uh, bravery and determination. And the reason for this is they're going to put it not not necessarily put in a challenge but they're going to hold off challenges and just get stuck in and uh, really you know if if a, if a defender is mis miscontrols a ball that you know they're going to be right on it to 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 sort of snatch away possession so for a gigan press type system that is uh, very useful traits i think something i like as well is dribbling um because they're going to be hitting a lot of balls over the top uh, through balls, and when that happens, you want this uh, your advanced forward to be able to sort of get on that ball and then run towards goal. And uh, I would say a minimum of eleven is is ideal, really, for for that trait. Uh, the next thing I would look at for for our system that we're going to be playing is uh, jumping and heading. So fifteen and fifteen for Haaland here. And the reason that is that you'll find that our our inside forwards, although they're chiefly going to be cutting in, you. They and uh, both our fullbacks are going to actually be putting in a, a decent number of crosses. And if you have a decent jumping and uh, heading uh, stats there, then you know they're, they're going to be able to score a good amount of goals from, from the balls that are coming in. Something else that is, is reasonably important for the Gigan Press is, is work rate. Now, I wouldn't necessarily go crazy high on this, but anything sort of a 11 or above there would just mean that they're, they're putting their weight for the team, that you know, they're making run after run and uh, yeah, get, getting on the end of chances. The next thing I would look at, and I, I sort of lump these together, is uh, technique, which is how well they strike the ball, and composure, which is just being having a clear head when when they're going into finished chances. So between the two of those, and with the finishing stat as well, they're going to be controlling a ball well, striking it well, and just having the, the clear headedness to put in a good finish. So a combination of those three uh, traits just means they're going to be scoring a lot of goals. Uh, the next thing I would look at is um, anticipation, which is, uh, as it sounds, you know, if the midfield or 
even the defensive players that are playing through balls or putting in good passes, then anticipation is is how well the, the forward is making those runs to get on the end of those. And at 16, Haaland is able to anticipate a lot of the passes that are coming in and get into the right positions to put in a good finish. And allied to that is off the ball movement as well. So I think those tend to work quite well together if they're both high. And again, Haaland is crazy high on off the ball movement. And Lastly, another thing I would tend to look for, which is maybe not essential, but um, something like decisions. And the way it describes decisions is um, the player's ability to make the correct choice both with and without the ball. So again, I think for, for a finisher, someone who's um, making moves, and an advanced forward also will play in uh, teammates as well on occasions. So that, that's something that's, that can be quite useful to have. So there we go. Erling Haaland is the perfect striker for, for the Gigan Press system we're playing. Um, we can see at Dortmund here, 13 games in, he scored 10 goals. Um, and I would say he, he's only going to get stronger as the game progresses. So we're going to look at someone who's a bit lower down in terms of the price they cost, but is equally going to be a fantastic striker for this system. Now, Andrea Bellotti. At the start of the game, he's uh, this is actually um, a game in which he's just signed for, for Lazio. But at the start of the game, he's still playing for Torino, and he's uh, got a contract till 2022. And in most of the campaigns I've played, he, uh, he'll either leave on a free at the end of the 22 season or is snapped up in January for anywhere between sort of five to ten million pounds. You can even probably get him at the start of the season. I think if we look at what Lazio in this uh, career have signed him for, at the start of the season, they signed him for 5.75 million. So he's someone who can play for a, pre a top Premier League team so, uh, and would be willing to sign for anyone who's sort of... Mid upwardly mobile from mid-table and if we look again look at his sort of key stats we can see that in pace and acceleration he's quick without being lightning fast but this is uh, more than good enough for the system we're playing um, he's also a very strong player uh, which is good for holding off uh, challenges in terms of jumping and heading he's okay without being fantastic but you know he's more than capable of uh, getting on the end of crosses and, and sticking it in um, his anticipation and off the ball movement are both very high. He's a very intelligent striker who can make the correct runs and get into the right positions. Uh, his bravery and determination are even higher. He's, um, he, he, if you combine with his 17 work rate, he's a real, and, and teamwork there, he's a real workhorse, someone who's just going to keep pressing and pressing until, uh, until the end of the game for 90 minutes because he's got good stamina and strength, as I said. Um, and if you look at his uh, finishing, that's, you know, it's, it's not as good as Haaland, but it's, it's very, very high. And dribbling is more than acceptable for someone who's going to be, you know, sort of running with the ball towards goal. And technique and composure are also pretty high. So for, you know, sort of the five to ten million pounds you could buy him for at the beginning of the game, or even free if you're willing to take the risk and wait until summer uh, 22, um, he's, a, he's a very good, good striker. And at 27, he's got, you know, probably another three, even four seasons at a, at a high level before you need to think about uh, replacing him. Now the next player we're going to look at, look at is someone I would call um, maybe more of a wonder kid, but someone who can uh, be signed. I've even signed him for for championship clubs. So you know, even if you're starting in the English Championship, uh, the team who's expected to achieve promotion, it, it's someone who should be attainable. And this player is Benjamin uh, Sheshko at uh, Red, uh, at Red Bull Salzburg. So he's playing in Austria at the start of the game. Now he's 18 years old, so he's he's one that we're signing to develop and when you sign him for a championship club obviously all the sort of ideal attributes you, you can get away with having a lower value in so for thing for instance like finishing I would probably for Premier League never look below sort of 14 15 for that he's 13 at the start of the game but he will improve as he plays by the time he's sort of 20 21 he's that should be around the 15 mark in terms of pace he's he's quick again like sort of Bellotti and at six foot five he's very good at heading uh, getting jumping reach and heading so he's very good at getting on into those crosses uh, work rate composure decisions determination bravery all of these are pretty high they're, they're sort of fairly mid-range here but if i put up uh, an image of, of what he'll look like in a few seasons time uh, we can see that you know he, he is going to improve and improve and for, for me across different campaigns he's, he's been a bit of a gold machine so yeah highly recommended uh, the next player I'm going to look at is someone who's more of a longer-term longer target. Yasufu Makoku. 
And a lot of people may, he may be a familiar name to, to a fair lot of players already. He's become a bit of a FM22 legend, this kid. So he's someone who's playing in uh, Borussia Dortmund under 19s at the start of the game. He's 16 years old and he's already extremely quick. Um, doesn't have the jumping reach, is the, probably the only mark against him, but uh, very composed, very good dribbler, very good finisher, uh, very good technique and composure. Um, yeah. So he is, he is someone who's very good. And again, I'm going to put up a, a slide just to show what he's going to look like uh, by the time he's 21. And we can see that he is just incredible. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way of getting around it. Now, the reason he's more of a longer-term target is because he's 16, he actually can't be signed until the age of 18, which means the earliest you'd be able to sign him from a foreign league anyway uh, would be uh, January 2023. Uh, and in 2023, either January or summer, you can probably look to get him for around the £40 million pound mark. Um, and I've seen campaigns where I haven't been able to get him then. He wouldn't come. Uh, but I've been able to then get him by January or summer uh, 2025. So two years later, we're at the age of around 20, 21. And he's cost double that, you know, 80 to £100 million. Pounds. So he's someone whose value will just absolutely skyrocket. And the last pair I'm going to look at is someone who may be more suitable for uh, a lower league team. Uh, and he actually plays alongside Sheshko at uh, Salzburg. It's, this is Roko Simic. And again, he's someone who we're looking to develop. He's 18, uh, another fairly tall player at six foot two. So the jumping reach and, and heading is decent, decently quick. Um, the finishing again is a bit lower even than, than Sheshko at uh, 12. But uh, again, within a, within a few seasons, that will be around the sort of 14, 15 mark. Um, very determined, good work rate, uh, decisions are a bit low, but again, as an 18-year-old, he, he is going to improve in a lot of these values. He's possibly not someone you'd look to uh, be winning the Premier League title with, but certainly if you're a championship club looking to get promoted and then consolidate to stay in the Premier League, uh, then he, he would be a good target. And you know he can be bought for, at the beginning of the game, probably for around the 7.5 to 10 million kind of range. So if you're a championship club with a reasonable budget, then, then he's someone that would be very worth uh, looking into. So there we go. Those are my suggestions as uh, potential strikers to fill that advanced forward spot in our Gigan Press team. Uh, they're players that I've bought in different campaigns at different times and always had uh, very good success with it at the sort of levels that uh, my teams were, were playing in then. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked that. If you did, then please do hit the like button. Uh, perhaps consider subscribing to the channel. That would be fantastic. Uh, in the meantime, I'll see you next time where we're going to take a look at probably the right inside forward position and players that would be a good match for that. Um, so I'll see you then. Bye for now.